Hello there, Shinobi Ranger bringing you another episode of The Checkout and today I'll be showing you FTL Faster Than Light. This game was released September 2012, so it was about a while ago, yes, almost a year. I'm late to the party, but uh, I still want to show this game because this game is really awesome. This game was created by a few people and it was actually kickstarted and it's one of the successful kickstarted games that came out during the time of the Kickstarter Gold Rush, whatever you want to call it. But nonetheless, it's, it's out. It's on Steam right now for 10 bucks. 10 bucks. 10 bucks. And you can get the soundtrack too. And uh, I recommend you get the soundtrack because the music is great. And the uh, game is so great. Just, just buy it. You don't have to stop watching the video, just buy the game. Alright. If you're not convinced, I'll just show you the video. So yes, it's made by Subset Games, made by a few people, get started. Yeah, it's a space role-playing roguelike game. So what you do is um pretty much go from A to B. You're trying to survive and fighting other spaceships and whatnot. You upgrade your ship, get more weapons and what, and get to the end of the level. It's nothing, it's pretty much um not free roaming or anything, but it's, it's procedurally generated each time. So each... Time you play a new game is different, and that the differentness, the different I don't know if that's the word or not. It it can affect how you play because sometimes the game just straight out difficult, sometimes just straight up easy, and it happened to me quite times a lot. That, yeah, that makes sense. So let's check the options. There's actually not much here. It's, the game is by default and 720. It it doesn't go any higher than that. I mean you can play full screen if you want. Up to you. Has some V-Sync friend limit stuff like that uh has it has achievements in the game but it doesn't have achievements in steam um yeah uh, i don't does is this game drm3 i'm not sure i don't remember but it does has uh, a lot of controls to configure if you like that stuff so yeah let's get to the game so let's start a new game let's start a game because i was probably dying to other game so let's start a new one so you start off with this ship the Castro is pretty basic ship and has a missile weapon and a laser weapon. And it's pretty much two weapons, that's it. Uh, you have three crew members, a max of eight. And that's it, uh, let's just start a game and I'll explain more on the way. So, like I said, you're, you're, you're going from point A to point B pretty much all the way through the end of the level. There's different sectors, there's about a lot actually, that's a lot. But you're, you're running away from a rebel fleet. And they're gonna catch up to you eventually, so you can't stay in this one area. So you can't stay in this whole map forever. But what you do is pretty much you explore the whole map, try and get as much resources as you can, and get through the level, which is the exit over here, and which allows you to jump to other sectors of the galaxy, whatever you want to call it. So let's see what we got. We have your missiles, like I said, the missiles allows you to penetrate uh, enemy shields. So it doesn't, doesn't, um, pretty much direct hit, but it can be blocked by a defense drone. And maybe, I uh, hopefully get to show you that later. You have lasers. Laser doesn't use any ammo, like the missiles, missiles use ammo. You look up here, there's a number of missiles right there. And, uh, that's the hole. The shields, yeah. So, um, lasers don't require any ammo. It's infinite amount of uses and it's, it's pretty good, but, it, it has to break a shield before it can penetrate the hull. So let's continue. First, you want to move your crew members to each um, operatable uh, subsystem. It allows your, your your ship to perform a little better, cool down, weapon faster, shield recharge faster, and whatnot. Let's continue. So I can't go anywhere else. So I'm just going to the store. So yeah, I guess I got to help out. Show you what it has there. The store has a variety of stuff. So it always has these items right here, the fuel, your missiles to buy, and your drones to buy. You, the drones and missiles are pretty much a similar thing. You know, it costs, you have to buy it, and you need to repair it. So you could buy like subsystems, mostly um, drone control, crew, crew teleporter, or cloaking, or you can buy some weapons. Now sometimes you can buy crew members, and other times you can buy augmentations. Augmentations are pretty much like a small upgrade to your ship. At a small cost that doesn't um, affect your power, and I should I show you that too. I have cargo holding for stuff. You have drones. You have to buy the drone. Like, so here, cost eighty scrap. 
scrap is your currency in this game like dollars or whatever you use caps but let's continue so what's us see if you look at mm, I, no, I don't need a drum part sometimes sometimes you might come across some sort of like a uh, trader who wants specific items and you could trade with them not it won't hurt you sometimes you you know don't want to trade them so if you look at the detail of the game it's pretty pretty great pretty beautiful pixel art whatever you want to call it and the music is great like I said the sound is great it's, game has great presentation very great made by a few people too can't believe that all right so let me show you the ship upgrades so there's a shield system which pretty much your shield pretty much is it it requires two two was it two shield bars it says right there on a thing uh, can't can go off that two shield bars allows you to get another shield but you have to power these bars with your reactor and you have to buy that with scrap and then you pretty much get your shield for next year so I have to get two here to get to activate the two bars I bought here so the same thing goes with everything else, but you know, it does, it's not by two, it's about whatever, how much you want. But shield is always by two. And the more you further you go into it, the more it costs. Your engines allow to evade more oxygen. You feel oxygen, your ship can, you know, deplete oxygen if there's like a breach in your hull or your doors will open. You can actually use this to your advantage to eliminate fires on your ship. And your weapons, the more you have this, the more weapons you can put on your ship. Which requires more power, of course. You have med bay. Each ship, pretty sure each ship has a med bay, which allows you to heal your guys if they're like in a fight or they have to be damaged because there's no oxygen in the room. Yeah. And then there are those subsystems. They're, they do not require any power at all. They pretty much do their own thing by themselves. Now, there's a piling. This zone does allow. Autopilot, if uh, you upgraded it, and this is a uh, sensor to see your ship. There's a ship that doesn't. Some ships don't have sensors at all, and you can't see what's going on in the ship without a guy in that room. So it's pretty much fog of war, I guess. You can see the enemy ships um, room if you have this upgraded. The door system allows to have doors that cannot be penetrated if you upgraded it. So if there's a fire or there's a um, what is it? An enemy people whatever boarding your ship bad guys with guns laser guns they they have to break through the door before they go to the next room and it's usually nice to have if because you could eventually be boarded in this game by somebody somebody wants you there and there's your crew member humans a race that have no special skills at all they're pretty much boring people so there's there's about several other races there's one that has repair rate faster this one has better combat fighting other people there's the people and there's one um has a lot of health and whatnot. There's, there's, there's several amount. And there's one hidden race that uh, I won't show you at all. Unless I find them. Actually, I won't. I won't find it in this video. It's too long. But yeah, that's about it. And there's your augmentations, like I said. So let's continue. What else? Um, yeah, let's go. So, like I said, you want to explore as much as you can throughout the system before you go to your next system. So let's get into this combat right here. There's an enemy right here, right? I have a choice to either not fight them or not. Most of the time, when you when you encounter a rebel or somebody, you're gonna have to fight them just because. And you know, the more you fight, the more actually you might get out. So let's intervene and defend the outpost. So the game can pause, and it's actually a good feature to have to pretty much think out what what you're gonna what's gonna happen, what you wanna do, and you can actually pretty much volley fire. Volley fire is a, a good way. To fight, you pretty much wait for your all, all your weapons to charge up and shoot them at the same time. It's very effective, especially if they have drones defending their ship, and drones can deflect or shoot the storm missiles that are coming and whatnot. So he doesn't have anything. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna save my missiles because you don't want you don't want to waste your missiles. I'm gonna use my laser weapons. So I'm just gonna use it on his weapons. Now he has, if you, you may can't tell if you haven't played the game at all, an iron weapon, iron laser is what you want to call it. They disable a system where shields by default and they hit the shield and they can uh, pretty much, you know, it's, it's a good way to just slow them down pretty much. 
Now, I disabled their subsystem of weapons. Now, it's just threat. Now, he can't use his weapon until somebody repair it. You know, I, I don't know about the, the drones. I don't know how they repair their stuff. But for the your crew members, you know, for saving this couple, I actually got extra stuff. So, let's see. So, if your subsystem, subsystems are destroyed, you can repair it. But, you know, sometimes, they, if a missile hits that room or anything else, really, besides iron lasers, your your guy gets hurt to crew member. So let's continue. Uh, I do not love. I do not. I don't like going into nublas. They usually affect some sort of your your shields or your vision or something like that. But I, I I'll show you. Yeah. So, and there's always a baddie in here, a mantis. Bad guys. They are pretty much a praying mantis race. It's weird, but yeah. So my 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 sensors are disabled. Usually that's what happens when we're in here. So this guy has he has a beam. A beam can cut across multiple systems, but uh, it cannot pierce shields. So he has to get my shield first, and he does have a heavy laser. I think that's what it is over here. And if he can do it correctly, he can disable my shields first then use a beam and that's usually how they do it and it, it does cause a significant amount of damage especially to multiple rooms so let's continue so first I'm gonna try to disable the weapons first alright he disabled my shields okay now I disabled his weapons so now I'm gonna disable the shields shields down now I'm just gonna pretty much win this battle you know, continue now there's a variety of each type of weapon, there's a variety of missiles, lasers, beams, and there's bombs. Bombs pretty much itself teleport to the ship, but they tend to miss sometimes too, so it doesn't help. They do bypass shields. The only thing that missiles and bombs cannot bypass is uh, the Zoltan Super Shield. It's a green shield and um, it's, a, it's an extra buffer of shield level. But uh, it's, it's once per battle, it doesn't regenerate, like your regular shields, regular blue shields. So I want that battle pretty flawlessly. So, let's actually um, get power. Now, I usually would get power and put it into my shield, but you know, I don't have a lot of scrap. So I'm just putting that on engines, and it allows me to evade better. And you know, it may be 15%, but you know, everything counts in this game. Everything. Now the exit is right there, and over here is the baddies. They, you, you don't want to go back. You never want to go back, cause chances are you might fight a elite rebel fighter ship, whatever. And they're pretty strong. They can do a lot of damage to you before you can get out. You can escape the battle, but you have to wait for your your FTL drive to charge up before you can leave. Yeah, and actually, if they damage your engine engine before you can um, charge all the way. It's pretty, um, it's pretty poop. Yeah, destroyed, whatever. I don't know. Mm. So let's, um, let's see, let's see. Alright, let's go up here actually. There's nothing much here. So, what's this? Action, actually, uh, Federation Scout, but it's actually a pirate. You see these markings? These markings usually mean they're pirates. Now this guy wants me to give him money because he's a some sort of toll troll, whatever you want to call it. But you know, I'm not gonna let that happen. So I have to fight him. Too bad. Okay, so he pretty much has two lasers, so he can actually do a significant amount of damage. You know, he can disable my shield pretty easy. I already want shield level. So I want to destroy his weapon first. Now yeah, I, I'll, I'll get to the uh, story first, we can shoot. Let's see. Alright, there you go, that's good enough. Now he wants to surrender. Uh, I usually don't do this unless I'm dying by myself. And if you can kill them, get more scrap. Usually you get more scrap from killing them, but if you need missiles or more fuel, you know, usually uh, that's how it works out. Now he's gonna be destroyed. It's pretty easy to fire a while, I mean. Eventually you might end up getting destroyed later on in the game because this game is not forgiving at times. Not forgiving. 
So the crew themselves, I haven't explained much about it. Your, your crew can, you know, operate rooms like I said. And if they operate these rooms, they can gain, gain more experience in the rooms, allowing them to have better efficiency at that room, that subsystem, whatever. Allow them, your ship to be better. So it allows you, like, to perform, you know, what is it? Your, your firing rate of your weapon faster or recharge rate, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, I'm gonna put that there. Now, I, I can't put my power. I, you can remove power if you want. So, that, but don't do that. That's your oxygen. You need your oxygen. You can, I can't move it because I don't have enough slots. Actually, you need two to actually do that for you or your shields. So, I'll put that there. Let's continue. I'll end this video at when I get to the exit. And there's a rebel fighter. Actually, I, don't, I actually don't know what's the story between this, the Rebels and the Federation. This could be Star Wars in another alternate universe, you know. You know, maybe the Rebels are actually the good guys and you're the bad guy. Well, I don't know, actually. Uh, let's continue. So, I'm gonna just put another missiles in his weapons. He has missiles too, so you, chances are we'll launch at the same time. Oh, he launched first. Wow. And, oh, I'm actually missed. So I'm gonna have to do this. Okay, that's enough. Now I'm gonna go for the shields. I'm not gonna use my missiles. I, I tend to save my missiles unless I really need it. And that's how you should do it, I believe. I'm gonna pretty much win this battle. Oh, shot his missiles at me. Alright, oh, so now he destroyed one of my systems. Now I have to send my guy over there to repair it. The oxygen are pretty important. Well, pretty much every room is important. A uh, subsystem. But uh, you want to not lose any oxygen. That happens. You can end this guy. That happens, you know. Everybody starts suffocating. Yeah. Oh, I actually got augmentation. That's nice. So I got augmentation that allows me to reload faster. Let's check that out. Let's see. Let's see. It's an automated reloader. Improve by 15% so that's much better um, I usually tend to go for that if I get it now I don't have to buy it if you don't want something usually you can sell it if you want to go to the store let's continue so my oxygen rate is going back up you can actually open your doors like I said you can use this to eliminate fires if you know you have no crew members in there you can actually get drones to repair your system, but you know, if you saw earlier at the store, you have to buy the drone from your room. If you doesn't, if your ship doesn't come with it, some does, some doesn't. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you the drones, but uh, I'll explain it. So what the drones are, and there's actually let's, let's go this way. So the drones are pretty much similar, like you know, like any other sub room. You have to, what is this? All of the military have been destroyed and damaged. Yes, uh, that's a quest. So these are, these are the side quests. Sorry, I'm sidetracked. As usual, side quest. Well, let's do this. Down there. Yeah, I have enough time. I think. Let me see. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yep, that's good enough for me. So there's a the stress beacon. So where was I? The drones. Federation scouts. Give them fuel. All right. Is he gonna give me anything? Oh, I got a weapon. I got a weapon. See, this is what you get for being nice. You know? Actually, don't always be nice. Actually, do whatever you want. Just, you know, don't blame me. So, now I can't use this weapon because it requires three power. Now, I can if I really wanted to. And I shouldn't because it's a beam. And it requires, you know, to penetrate the shield. So, I have nothing to penetrate the shield. Now, you can actually, you know, take out the shield first and switch to your beam. You want me, you know. I'll stick to what I can because every second counts, you know, it's, it's real time reloading, whatever. So I'll stick with my missiles and my lasers. I can, let's see, I can take out the shields if I wanted to. I buy, let's say, if I get another weapon room, let's see, weapon control room and put power into here. Actually, let's, let's see what happens. I'm gonna do that. 
So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take out a power out and put it into my weapons. So now I'm gonna have this, and you can move this around. It's nice. Using to me using the the numbers on my keyboard is much faster for some reason. Pretty sure you'll figure it out if you try it. So I'm going to go to this quest. So, oh, find a mantis and cat man, but there are far too many. Blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, yes, I'm attacking so high. This is blue options I come up. They're pretty much, you know, guarantee success most of the time. Well, it seems, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're always guaranteed success. If you have the right crew member or the right equipment on your ship, these blue options come up depending on the situation, and you should always use these blue options. Now I'm gonna use the missiles and let's see what happens. Oh, I have. Okay, so maybe I guess it isn't true. I guess only like a small percentage of your chance. Well, actually, I mean higher percentage, but a small percentage of failure. This is usually how it is. Um, I'm gonna fight this guy. I'm gonna show you the beam. So first, I'm gonna take out the shields. Then I'm gonna use my beam. My missiles will launch first. See, he has a bomb actually, and you might see the bomb pop up on my ship. And the shields are down, so let me pause it. And pausing allows me to focus a little better. So I want to take out his weapons. Let's see. So what you want to do is usually try to take out as much rooms as you can. So, oh no, that's not right. Oh no, that's not right. Now. So this is actually good enough. Hmm. Yeah. That's good enough for me. Hopefully the shields don't come back up. Alright, let's go. See what happens. Oh wow, that was a really strong beam. Wow. Wow, that was really that was really awesome. Alright, let's check this out. I know this beam is really strong, but okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two damage per room hit. So I had three rooms, uh, six damage, and he had pretty low health compared to me. That was really great. All right, so what was I talking about before this popped up? The drones. All right, the drones, pretty much like any other system, but you know you have to put power in it too, also, and you know require drone parts up here. And you can have different drones, of course. There's one where it defends you from missiles incoming or asteroids. There's one that attacks the ship like a regular laser, laser drone. There's also a beam drone with, with like a beam weapon like mine. And what else? Is there? there's, there's drones you can put on your ship. There's one that can repair your, your systems. One that can um, fight if anybody comes into your ship. And there's one that you can launch to the enemy ship to board and you know fight them, cause problems. You know, I never actually use the crew teleporter, I just, you know fight them so let's continue that beam man that beam is really strong stronger than I thought I, I really use beams because it's really slow and you have to take out the shield first but I guess at the beginning it's really useful because later on I know I guess somewhere like a little close to midway alright you see everybody starting having two level shields you know you're gonna have to use maybe your missiles twice to take out the shields so now I'm at the beacon, the long range beacon allows me to go to the next sector. So I don't need drones actually because I don't have any um, drones or drone system on my ship. So I'm gonna sell it. And I got that. So actually, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. So what I can do here also if I really wanted to is um. I'm gonna do this anyway. I'm gonna put that into my my shields. I don't have enough power, but you know, like I, like I said, I can move things around. That's versatility. So I can I can take out my beam and I put my burst laser. In. Oh, or I can take out that and do that and do that. It just it depends on the situation. Cause sometimes your maybe your your weapons go out, but you still have your shields, and you know you can do that instead. But actually, I'm gonna stick my missiles and beams so I'm gonna jump to the next sector you know 
I said earlier that, you know, the level changes each time you play a new game, and it does. It, is, it won't always be the same, except for the last level. The last level will always be a boss. You know, just different here. There's a, the red means bad guys, and purple, purple with bad guys too. Just, just, you can't, it's just more nubla, when you can't see your, your senses or whatever, and it's, it's really horrible. I hate that place. Don't go there. Bad place. So, it depends where you want to go. There's a rock race. They, they have, the, they're the ones with the, the high high HP and you know maybe it takes a little more to fight them. Pirates. It's just pirates. They're boring. I don't know who they are. Alright, that's it. That's 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 pretty much what this game has to offer. But this game is fun. It has a lot of replayability. The music is great like I said. Really the what is it? Art style whatever is is really great too. I mean this game is really worth to buy for ten dollars. I mean, I wish I wish I told you about the game earlier during a theme summer sale, but I haven't. But uh, the game is the game is great. Now this game costs ten dollars on Steam. I'll put a link. Go go check it out. Buy the soundtrack too. So great. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and see you guys next time. Means for you people who understand is different each time you play, which adds replay value.